Hi, and congratulations on the purchase of your beautiful new 2018 SV Kicks. This is an exciting new crossover for Nissan in the North America market. It's been out for a little while in South America, so we're super proud to introduce this into the North American market. It is absolutely amazing on gas, very stylish, and super comfortable. So, I know we covered a lot when we did the delivery of your new kicks. Let's go back over everything now just to refresh your memory. And at the end, my contact info will follow. If you still have any questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch with me. Let's have a look at this amazing vehicle. As I look here at the beautiful center of display that we have on this, I can see I've got my audio sources going right here. So this is the home menu. I can get here simply by pressing the home menu button right here and it takes me to this screen. So this is a full touch screen. I can get to my audio sources right through here. And from there, down across the bottom, I see I've got AM, FM, satellite radio, which would be free for the first three months, Bluetooth, and USB. So it does give me some really nice options here. Auxiliary is another one. Your auxiliary port and USB port are down below here. So like I said, lots of options for your audio. We've got our phone right here. There's another button for that here, and then on the steering wheel we have our Bluetooth hands-free. However, if you want to set up your phone, we're just going to go into the settings, we're going to hit connections, and then under Bluetooth we would hit add new. And then the system here. So once you get to this, you want to go into the Bluetooth settings on your phone, make sure that you're in there, and you're going to look for a device that says My Kicks. From there, you're going to tap on it and you're going to hit either pair or connect. You're going to allow any screens that come up because it's going to allow your favorites and your address book to connect to it. And that's it. You're fully connected on your phone. So as I mentioned, we do have lots of options here. I can get into the audio options for my sound right through here. From there, I can increase or decrease my treble my bass, where my sound is, left or right, front or back, and so on, and increase the speed sensitivity so that as I get on the highway and start getting up to speed, it will automatically adjust the volume for me so that I don't need to. It's going to help increase the volume so that I can still hear it at a really good rate. I can also get to those same settings by pushing this button over here. So if I do this and watch the top of my screen, there's my bass, middle, treble, balance, fade, and out we go. And for any one of them, I can just turn the dial left or right, and if I wait, it goes away and that's it, it's fully set. Down below here, we've got our climate controls. I'm gonna turn this on. So it is a digital climate control. Find the temperature that you like, and then from there, if you leave it on auto, from then on out, it's going to determine where your airflow goes and how high the fan is. This is being done to get the inside of the cabin to that temperature as fast as possible. So in this case, it's trying to get me to 18 as fast as possible. I can feel cool air coming out of the vents and it's got the air going right to the vents. Now if I want to change this manually myself, I can simply hit this button here. So it goes from the vents, vent to floor floor, floor and windshield, back to the vents, and I have a button here to put it directly to the windshield so I'm not fiddling with it trying to get there quickly. So I'm going to put this back to auto. My rear defrost is right here which also activates my heated side mirrors. I have heated seats right here and here, so I can set it to high, low, or off for either one. My push button ignition is down below here right next to my steering column. Now this USB port is going to interact with the system. There are two additional USB ports right back here, which are strictly for charging purposes. So if you want to connect your phone and not have it interact with the system, just use those rear USB ports. Let's have a look at the steering column and your digital driver assist display. All right, so we're gonna have a look at the Android Auto here. To work the Android Auto, you need to connect via a USB cord down below here right to your phone. You need to have the Android Auto app installed, which you can get from the Google Play Store. It is a free device, a free app. 
From here, once that we're connected, we can hit the button down here for directions. It launches Google Maps. Makes your car pretty much act like a navigation system at that point. Just be aware it is going to use a little bit of your data, but not much. To get back out of here, we can simply hit this button here. We can access our phone right from here. As it does disconnect your uh, Bluetooth hands-free. And then over here, we've got music. Give us a full list of any music that we want to listen to. Or we can head back out of the app right by this button here. So when I hit this and then press our button, it takes us back out of Android Auto. And that's as simple as Android Auto is. All right, we're gonna have a look at Apple CarPlay now. This is a little bit different than Android Auto. You don't need an app on your phone to work this. Once you connect your iPhone to the system, again, using the cord to do so, this is the screen that pops up. So very much like the Android Auto, the biggest feature here that you're probably gonna use is our maps. So with this, it's gonna give you the same feel as a navigation system in the vehicle. It does use a little bit of data. It's not bad on your data, but please be aware that it does use that. And again, like the Android Auto, it disables the Bluetooth hands-free. So your phone, you still have the option here and you still answer it right from the steering wheel, but it is all through the cord on your phone for this. You've also got access to your music, any podcasts that you might have on here, audio books, messaging, and WhatsApp. And then that gives you a good view of the Apple CarPlay. So as I look at my steering column here, I can see a few things. On the right hand side over here, I've got my Bluetooth hands free. So this button here on the right is going to allow me to answer phone calls and hang up. If I want to make an outgoing call, I have to use the voice recognition button here on the left. From there, just follow the prompts. If you don't want to follow the prompts, if you know exactly what the command is that you're going to do, simply press it again and it'll cut off the talking, wait for the tone, and then you can just speak your command. This button here is going to set our cruise control, so as I watch the display up top when I push the button, I see right up here, I get my cruises on. From there, I can set the speed, I can resume if I've had to cancel or tap the brake, I can cancel, I can increase the speed or decrease the speed. It will show a digital speed up here so I can see exactly what speed I'm doing. Over on this side of our steering wheel, we've got our volume for our radio. This button here, these two are going to go through the preset. So if I look at my radio, I'm on preset six. And if I hit the left button, it goes to five, four, three, two, and so on. The right button is going to change it as well. Also, while doing that, if I look at my screen, it tells me what's going on right on my screen. So I can see everything to do with my radio there. Now, this screen that I'm on is the main screen. It's the very first screen. I have a digital tachometer and it will show me how many kilometers till empty. Now, I'm on low fuel right now, so it's not really showing me anything. Once I fill up, it will show me how many kilometers I have till empty right in the center there. And then I have my gas gauge down the bottom. Now, if I go to the right, I can see what's going on with my radio. From this screen, the OK button is going to change the source of my audio. So if I press OK, I go from FM to satellite to Bluetooth to auxiliary to AM and back to FM. So everything that I want to do with my radio is fully controllable right here from the steering wheel. My hands never have to leave the wheel. My eyes stay face forward the entire time. Next screen to the right is going to show me my average fuel economy. Because this vehicle is pretty much only idled, it is running high. Now I just reset it by pressing OK. These vehicles are fantastic on gas. You're going to get 6.6 .6 liters per 100 kilometers on the highway and 7.7 .7 in the city for a combined of 7.2. My experience has been as long as you don't drive it hard, you're actually going to see better fuel economy than that. Those are just averages. Now if I hit down, I get a little bit of a history on the fuel economy of the vehicle. Next screen to the right, this one gives me a digital speedometer as well as some radio information down the bottom here. So this is really nice. 
If I wanted to see the exact speed I'm going, some people prefer a digital speedometer, this screen will do that. Nissan does not have many vehicles that'll do that, but the kicks will. Now if I hit down, I get all of my averages for my driving computer. So as we see here, I'm at 0.5 kilometers driven since it was reset last and a lot of idling because it had been running for a total of 17 minutes. That's why the fuel economy was so high. However, if I press the OK button, I can reset all or I can reset any individual one that I'm doing there. So once that's done, I'm going to press the back button. From here, I'm going to go down again. My driving aids refers to the automatic emergency braking that's in the front of this vehicle. So the way that that works is if the vehicle in front of you suddenly slams on the brakes and you're closing that distance really quick. Inside the vehicle here, it's going to beep at you. At the same time, the gas pedal is going to push back against your foot. When that happens, if you do not react, the beeping will get louder and faster. And if need be, it will apply the brakes up to 60%. Most times, your foot's going to be over on the brake before you get to do anything. But depending on how close everything is when it happens and how fast it happens, you may be the one who ends up hitting the brake first. This final screen here is going to show me the tire pressure for all four tires individually. So we have tire fill alert with this. So while I'm driving, the four, the four tires will show me the individual pressures. From there, if I get a low tire, it's going to pop up with a warning. When that warning is there, I can go and I can see exactly what tire needs air. And then from there, when I go to the gas station and start putting air in the tire, as soon as I get to the right pressure, the horn is going to beep to tell me I'm done. That is the beauty of the tire pressure monitoring system. Next screen over is our vehicle settings. Normally, I only change one vehicle setting here. It's under the locking. So as we see here, by default, our vehicles automatically unlock the door when the ignition gets turned off. So I'm going to change that so that the moment I shift into park, my door is going to automatically unlock. That's normally the only setting I change. Feel free to change any of the settings that you want in here. Don't worry about messing anything up because there is a factory reset rate on the bottom. One more over brings us back. We're going to hop back over here to the display for a moment. I want to show you how to set your clock. So right now it says it is 344, which is very accurate. But if I go into my clock and then I want to set manually from here, during daylight savings time especially, I can increase or decrease my hour, I can change the minutes, and then as I see here, I have the wrong day. Today is actually only the 9th, everything's all set now, I can hit back, and my clock is all set. The last little bit to go over is your key fob. So as I see here, I've got a panic button, and then I've got my keyless entry. I've got unlock and lock. Now, because it's a key fob, and I do have a push button ignition, the battery in the key fob, after two to four years, is going to die. When that starts to happen, when your battery starts getting low, you're going to get a message that's going to pop up on the screen here that says incorrect key ID when you try and start the vehicle. Just give it a minute to go away, and then do it again, and it should start. If you hit a point that your battery is completely dead, on the back here, there's a little switch. And if I push that over, I can pop out a key for the driver's side door so I can still get into the vehicle. From there, I want to take the Nissan emblem on the key fob, put it directly against the ignition button, and use that to push it down to start the vehicle. That way I can still start the vehicle. Now, if you want to change the battery in this, once you pop the key out, there's two little recessed areas, one on either side here. If you fit something in there and give it a little twist, it'll pop open. From there, you're going to get the battery inside. And the battery's got a number on it. That number is the size of the battery. You can pick them up at a lot of local places. They're not expensive. From there, you can switch out the battery, or you can just take your key fob back into Nissan. They'll switch the battery out for you. 
The final thing that I'm going to show you is the intelligent key system and how you can use your key fob with that. So with the intelligent key system, as long as I have the key fob on me, because it needs to be within three or four feet of the door that I'm at, there is a button on each of the front, front handles. So one on the driver's side, one on the passenger side. And again, as long as I have that key fob on me, one push of the button unlocks the door that I'm at. The second push will unlock the entire vehicle so that I can then get in front or back either side. Once I get out and all the doors are shut, I can push this button here. I hear two beeps. The whole vehicle is now locked. However, should the key fall out of your pocket or let's say you leave your purse or your coat inside and the key is inside, you hop out and you go to push the button. I hear an awful lot of beeping and my door is still unlocked. The kicks will not let you lock your vehicle or your key inside the vehicle. So that's the intelligent key system that comes on the kicks on the SV. Congratulations again on the purchase of your beautiful new 2018 SV kicks. I know you're going to love this vehicle. It's going to be a great vehicle for you. It's going to get you the maximum fuel economy that you're going to get in a crossover utility vehicle. And it's going to be comfortable in doing so with a ton of features on it. I hope you enjoy the vehicle as much as I do. I know that you will. I look forward to seeing you anytime that you're in for service. Pop by, say hello. I'll see if I can see you as well. And I look forward to dealing with you when it's time to buy your next vehicle. Please don't hesitate to get in touch if you still have any questions. My contact info is immediately following.